Uh, my name is Kurt Willems. I'm a writer and a church planter. Uh, I write at a blog called the Pangea Blog. It's uh, where I've been just fleshing out my experience as a newer Anabaptist, I suppose. Um, that's only been since 2008. So I've kind of processed a lot of my journey through writing. Uh, I also am a church planter in Seattle, Washington. That's fairly new. I've been doing that since about a year ago, and uh, my family relocated from California and are having a great time. Our church is called Pangea Communities. Uh, we're in the phase where we have a core group and we're meeting in a church basement, so we're kind of underground, and it's been really fun just shaping an identity with people who are excited about the kingdom and uh, those kinds of things. So when we talk about the kingdom, it's kind of this like big word. We don't use this language in the United States uh, and in most places in the world. We don't use this kingdom language, at least not how the first century church was. And, you know, this was a subversive move in the first century to say that God's domain, God's ruling activity is different than the ruling activity of those who want to run the world, like Caesar and um, empires and these kinds of things. You know, when we talk about the kingdom of God and Jesus, Paul, when he talks about the church, is really just meaning the kingdom, right? And they're almost synonymous ideas. I'm not really convinced of that argument. I think the kingdom of God is anywhere where God's ruling activity is happening. I think it's the domain in which God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. So I, I see the kingdom as this big thing, um, and I see the church as the conduit through which people awaken to that big thing. One of the misconceptions is that, um, you know, and I think this was throughout the early, you know, before the Reformation, uh, was, you know, the church is the domain in which the kingdom, and, and this marriage of church and state kind of reinforced that weird idea, I think, that uh, the church is like the, the uh, I don't know, fortress in which the kingdom is contained. And I'm just really convinced that that's not the case. I'm convinced that um, God is at work all over the cosmos, and anytime we join God in that as the church, the church is then fulfilling its uh, kingdom vocation as the means or the window through which God's life is experienced. And thus, we experience the kingdom through the church, but the church isn't the kingdom. So, I think there's a few challenges. I think, first and foremost, when you start talking about Jesus as a subversive, radical, revolutionary, first century Jewish peasant man, rabbi, who upset the status quo that eventually got him crucified. When you start talking about these kinds of things, uh, anytime you disrupt people's norm, it ruptures things. And, and one of the hardest things for me personally, to be honest, is the way in which it's ruptured personal relationships with other people. So I have these people that I grew up with and they love God, they love Jesus, they wanna follow God, they wanna follow Jesus, but they no longer can see me as in their camp or on their team. And I hear these stories all over the place from people in this kingdom movement and, and it's heartbreaking. And, and there's a lot of um, repair that ha has to happen. Um, and so I think one of the challenges is simply saying, how do we hold on and integrate the good things that we had before maybe we were awakened to this other part of the gospel, this kingdom vision? I'm excited that Christians are slowly starting to kind of escape the matrix, if I can use that as a metaphor, and they're seeing that there's more to reality than this fixed set of assumptions we grew up with. And it's not because we feel like we should rebel or be judgmental of that stuff, but more so because we want to get to the heart of the Father. We want to get to the heart of Jesus. And I think people are awakening to that reality and the Holy Spirit is doing something fresh. And um, you know, hopefully we also recognize that there's so much more to be had. And um, yeah, so I'm excited because um, I realize that I'm not the only one who's thinking these thoughts and dreaming these dreams, but let's start making these dreams concrete. That's kind of the next step. Uh, not that they're not concrete anywhere, but let's start seeing what God could do with all of these folks throughout the world who are dreaming, don't know where to go next. Ah, when it becomes concrete, it's going to be amazing. So.